Peter Sand, who is a uh, shipping analyst. Uh, Peter, good to have you on the show. So um, soon funny. after the incident, uh, the general consensus was that, you know, this wouldn't cause too much disruption to the uh, global supply chain. Um, the fact of the matter is that the mega vessel is still launched uh, into the side of the, uh, the canal. There's more than 150 ships that are uh, in queue. Uh, is that still the line? Very much so, and uh, and by the minute that line gets longer, obviously uh, a canal that uh, that normally caters to uh, to a bit more than 50 transits a day, uh, being blocked, you basically just uh, build a longer waiting line. Uh, the longer this is going to last, uh, so uh, much activity is going on around uh, the ever given uh, as we speak, uh, and I think the world is watching every single dredger that is uh, that is trying to to assist refloating uh, the ever given uh, which is currently stock uh peter tell me this uh the mv ever given is little more than uh 400 meters long that's almost a half a kilometer long in terms of the length that's huge um ships are getting larger and larger uh, in fact this new uh ship category that the ever given is is actually called ultra large container ships i mean some of them are even too big to pass through uh the panama canal i mean isn't this going to be more of a problem uh you know getting bigger boats through much narrower uh, passageways as we move forward? Obviously, uh, that is a, a solid question to ask uh, at a current situation like this, uh, but it's it, it's every now and then that, that something like this happens, and often it, it, it goes away uh, without uh, much uh, spectacle. But uh, but when it gets stuck for for quite a few days, and it's likely to get stuck for a few more days, obviously it catches attention. But uh, but this is all about about uh, making uh, transportation more uh, green going forward, uh, using uh, economies of scale to bring down the unit costs of transported cargoes around the world. So this is a trend and tendency that has been going on for, for quite some time with larger and larger ships, enabling also more goods to be transported on, on a global scale. So uh, so this is a tendency that is that is here to stay. And, and I think, well, at any given day, uh, uh, something can happen like this one. Uh, but, uh, but fingers crossed, uh, it'll soon be dealt with. But, okay. Uh, um, but for... Uh, yeah, we're based in Istanbul, and, and I'm pretty familiar with what happens uh, with, with what, what happens in, in the Bosphorus. Uh, as far as I know, when ships or mega ships travel through uh, important or difficult to navigate through passages, generally what happens is you have expert pilots who are, uh, who join uh, you know the the regular crew on the ship to help them navigate through. If that's what happened, it means whatever happened to the MV Ever Given must have been something that even the experienced pilots could not handle. Well, I think the jury is still out on what exactly happened, uh, because as I alluded to, uh, on any given day, more than 50 ships uh, transit the, the canal uh, with with only a small, if if any, issues at all. Uh, so, uh, so this is this is quite unfortunate. Uh, I'm I'm sure that uh, the authorities are doing whatever they can to clear this uh, roadblock, because obviously this has ripple effects and repercussions also beyond uh, the seaborne leg of the transportation into those industries that uh, that account uh, for uh, for for receiving these cargoes in due time for for their production so uh, so this is uh, this is a big thing i'm choosing okay uh shipping analyst peter sand thank you very much for joining us here on the news hour do appreciate it